Hello, and welcome to Discussions with DPIC, our podcast featuring conversations with experts on death penalty issues. I'm Ann Holsinger, the Information and Resource Specialist at the Death Penalty Information Center. Today, we're joined by Kate Black, a staff attorney with the Texas Defender Service who has represented death row inmates for nearly a decade. She'll be discussing the case of Jeffrey Wood and Texas's Law of Parties. Kate, thank you for speaking with us today. Thanks for having me. So we're going to be tackling a pretty complex legal issue today, uh, the Law of Parties, which allows the death penalty for certain defendants who didn't kill anyone or intend for anyone to be killed. This issue was in the news recently because Texas had set an execution date for a man named Jeffrey Wood, but his execution was recently stayed by the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals on a separate issue, which we'll touch on a little bit later, involving biased psychological testimony. But could you start us off by explaining the facts of Wood's case and how a man who didn't directly kill anyone came to be on death row? Sure. So um, the case of Jeffrey Wood is a really good example of the problem with the law of parties. Um, Jeff Wood had a long history of intellectual um, and psychiatric disabilities and impairments. And he met a man named Daniel Renault. And Daniel Renault hatched a plan to rob this convenience store. And when the day came to rob the convenience store, um, Jeff said, I want to make sure we don't have a gun. It looked like Daniel Renault was going to bring a gun, and Jeff asked him to make sure he didn't bring the gun. It turns out that Daniel Renault snuck back in and grabbed the gun and instead brought a gun to the convenience store. So while Daniel Renault was entering the convenience store for this robbery, Jeff Wood was sitting uh, in the vehicle outside. Daniel Renault ended up shooting someone as the robbery went bad, and Jeff Wood was ultimately convicted uh, and sentenced to death for capital murder. To get a little bit further into um, Wood's case, what were the circumstances that allowed him to be charged with the law of parties and to receive a death sentence, even though he wasn't actually present during the robbery? So one of the factors they used was that he had um, entered the premises after the shooting and had helped um, carry out some of the uh, loot after the robbery. Um, but mainly what it focused on was the idea that uh, he inc- like encouraged and somehow aided uh, in this shooting, uh, regardless of the fact that he didn't have intent. And that's something that's really unique to the law of parties is that it allows this criminal liability even if you lack that intent. Okay. So what kind of other cases does it sometimes get applied in, um, particularly in Texas? It's usually a a situation in which we see like a non-trigger person, somebody waiting in a getaway car, um, someone who helped after the fact, things that would normally not qualify in other states for capital murder conviction. And we see in Texas and a couple of other states, um, these capital convictions where there's a significantly reduced culpability um, from the actual perpetrator. You you mentioned briefly that other states do have some idea of accomplice liability, which allows someone to be punished for a crime if they aid the primary perpetrator. Um, And certain places have felony murder statutes that allow death sentences even for accomplices. But what do you think sets Texas use of that apart? I think that Texas, I mean, we use this law of parties in a way that is really unique in the United States. We use it more than any other state. And we use it for cases in which the crime is not the worst of the worst. You know, we have this idea that the death penalty is really reserved for the most heinous crimes, the worst of the worst, um, the most malicious and heinous intent. And what we see in cases like that of Jeff Woods is that someone who even um, repudiated the idea of having violence be a part of a crime, in fact, are held to the same level of culpability as the person who actually brought the gun and um, ended up killing someone. So what does a case like Jeff Woods where someone without intent to kill could potentially be executed by the state of Texas say about the use of the death penalty more broadly? Well, I think we have this idea, like I said, that the death penalty is reserved for a certain class of criminals, a certain class of people who have... um, who are the most risk and who have done the most heinous things. And I think when we see cases like Jeff Woods and these cases where the law of parties 
is invoked to obtain a death sentence where someone really lacks any intent to cause physical harm, you see kind of a disproportionate use of the death penalty from state to state. So for example, if this crime had taken place in a state that did not use an accomplice liability statute in the way Texas does, this would not have been a death penalty eligible crime. And so I think that that is what has caused so much kind of concern and uh, and outrage um, among legislators and religious leaders, kind of wondering how the system can operate when it is not uniform. So our focus today, and I think a lot of the media focus on Jeff Wood's case, has been on that issue and that question of um, whether he really deserves a death sentence. But when his case was stayed recently, um, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals actually granted him a stay for a different reason. So could you talk about the reason for that stay and um, what will happen in his case going forward? Sure. So the Court of Criminal Appeals was simultaneously considering this issue of the law of parties and whether or not um, someone like Jeff should be facing execution based on such limited culpability. And at the same time, they were considering another claim involving Dr. Grigson, who is colloquially known as Dr. Death here in Texas, um, who is a now uh, disgraced um, medical professional who used to testify about whether or not someone would pose a future danger. And in Texas, that's really um, an important question because juries consider only two questions in determining whether or not a person receives a death sentence. And, and the first is whether or not they pose a future danger. So having this expert on the stand um, testify about future dangerousness is really important. So what was it about Dr. Gregson's testimony in Wood's trial that led the Court of Criminal Appeals to grant him a stay? So I think there are two things. Um, The first is the fact that he had actually been expelled from the professional organization, the APA, of which he was a member. And so he had testified uh, falsely um, after he had already been expelled. And so the Court of Criminal Appeals in particular has been recently very concerned with false uh, or unreliable or misleading testimony. Um, And I think that's been um, really troubling to them. And we've seen a number of stays of execution based on false or misleading testimony. And so what you've seen in Mr. Wood's case is that the CCA has now remanded that case for further development and briefing on Uh, whether there was really inaccurate or false testimony from this doctor who was really the crux of the future dangerousness case. So what do you expect to be the next steps in Mr. Wood's case? So for Mr. Wood, he now has a stay of execution that's pending um, until the resolution of his claim. So the Court of Criminal Appeals has now remanded those claims to the trial court And the trial court will do fact-finding, and they can do that by having a hearing, or they can do that by examining affidavits and documentary evidence. Um, And then the trial court will make a recommendation, and it will go back up to the Court of Criminal Appeals. What I think is really interesting about Jeff's case, though, is how much it has started a conversation about the law of parties in general. And although that was not the issue that got remanded, it certainly was an issue that got both local and national interest. And we've seen conservative members of the Texas state legislature talk about whether or not this is something that we want to continue to have. Yeah, I think that's been a really important result of this case. Um, we, we're we not based in Texas. We're in Washington, D.C., and we've seen a lot of coverage um, nationally of this case and of this question Do you think that Texas will grapple more with this question because of Wood's case? I do. I really do. I've seen um, some of the statements by Representative Leach, who's a well-known conservative uh, in the Texas legislature. And um, as they go into their next session, I think they'll really grapple with whether or not the law of parties and its kind of disproportionate use here in Texas is something that they're okay with. Um, if we're going to have the death penalty, shouldn't we reserve it for the worst of the worst?
Well, on that note, um, thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your expertise with us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. For more information on Jeffrey Wood, the Law of Parties, and other death penalty issues, visit deathpenaltyinfo.org. To make sure you receive every episode of our podcast, subscribe through iTunes or your podcast app of choice. To learn more about the Texas Defender Service and the work that Kate and her colleagues do, visit texasdefender.org.